I'm professional learning director for the Missouri State Teachers Teachers Association, and I uh, we're doing a Google Hangout today with uh, Shannon Younger, and Shannon is a new professional in uh, Jackson School District, and uh, I'm gonna we're gonna talk about a blog post uh, that she wrote for MSTA uh, a couple weeks ago, and it's gonna air on our uh, on our website uh, coming up, I think, later this week. But um, got a couple of questions. Want to ask her and uh, just get some uh, feedback from her about uh, the morning meeting concept strategy and uh, how other teachers might uh, find that beneficial uh, in their classrooms as well. So, with that, Shannon, would you tell us a little bit about uh, where you teach, what you teach, and uh, how long you've been teaching? Sure. Uh, I teach in Jackson, Missouri, which is in southeast Missouri, and I teach fourth grade at an elementary school called South Elementary School because it's in the southern part of our district. Um, our kiddos range in demographic of um, uh, the, what they look like and also um, free and reduced lunch. We are a Title I school as well. So you have children who are very affluent and children who are not mixing together into a school and sometimes that can cause a little bit of a um, misunderstanding between cultures. Um, so it's, it's, it's a fun school though. I have a classroom that's all superheroes and they really love that and um, I just really enjoy being there. This is my sixth year teaching. I've taught in Illinois, North Carolina, and now Missouri. Wow. All right. So what, uh, well, I'm going to ask a loaded question. Which one, which, which state do you like the best? Um, I definitely love Missouri. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they treat their teachers really well. They really have a heart for their kids. And MSTA is a wonderful program. So I, I definitely love being in Missouri as a teacher. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks. And uh, I didn't realize uh, that you had the experience in the other states. That's, uh, it's good to know. Um, so this is, uh, you're in your sixth year? Yes. Okay. All righty. Um, so where did the idea uh, for the morning meeting come from? Well, when I taught in North Carolina, it was actually a program that uh, I think is called Second Step that we were required as a part of our curriculum to do. And when I moved into Missouri about three years ago and um, went into schedule my you know, all the things you have to do within a day of fourth grade, I, I reeled in there. And I was like, oh, you know, I didn't really enjoy the program that I did there. I mean, it took a year off. And um, I ended up taking two years off and realized there was a lot of drama happening in my classroom, just unnecessary. Um, he's kicking my feet. They're doing this. The tattling got really high. I mean, you think in fourth grade it wouldn't um, increase to that degree, but it was taken away from our education. And... Um, I got to the point where I was thinking, you know, maybe I should just do an experiment. Nobody else does it in our district, but just try a morning meeting 10 minutes in the beginning of the day and see if that would be an effective fix for all of these different little nitpicky things that happen throughout our day. Um, because, you know, the students don't seem to have a chance to air that. And if they do, it's during instructional time. And so why not just set out 10 minutes, 15 minutes and let them have that opportunity to uh, share their concerns or share what's bothering them. So I thought, let's try it. I didn't go back to that program, but took some ideas from it and went from there. Great, great. Um, well, it's, I remember last summer, whenever you first shared about the program, um, the concept, if you will, that strategy, uh, it sounded like it would be uh, very beneficial uh, for other classes to try. And I'm sure there's probably some that uh, do it in Missouri as well. but. Um, always good to, good to get new strategies and share with others. Um, the main purpose, uh, is there a main purpose or other goals? And uh, maybe you uh, mentioned those, but uh, just to clarify any goals there with that, with sure. the morning meetings? Absolutely. Um, my main goal just going into it is I'm not here just to teach academia. I don't just teach academics when I go into school. You, as an elementary teacher and as any teacher, you wear a lot of different hats. And um, you know that one where you're kind of mothering them and you realize, oh, we probably just need to take some time and teach these kids how to be human to one another, how to be um, kind and considerate, and then realizing more about themselves as well. So like my main goal was just how do I make my children who come in better than when they came in, when they leave? 
How do I improve their social skills as well, those soft skills that might be lacking from the beginning of the year to the end of the year? So that's the, the big goal. But the, the little ones are, how can I read myself and know what my body's trying to tell me? Um, like if I'm angry, what are my triggers and how do I recognize those? It's, it's just that simple. I mean, if I'm a kindergartner and I'm angry, how can I know that I'm angry? Well, my fist might clench or my face might get hot. And then going from there, but just the most basic step of how do I know I'm angry? What do I do with those anger feelings? How do I quiet those voices in my head that say, oh, I really want to hurt that person because they made me feel upset. So there's that, the aspect of, okay, how do I know myself? And then how do I treat others? So those would be like the two peers underneath it of um, kindness towards myself and understanding myself, kindness towards others. Because um, when you're in fourth grade, you're still very much, I mean, even as an adult, you're still very much centered on yourself. So want to broaden the horizon and think, okay, um, what about that person? I wouldn't like it if somebody kicked me in the shins when they were mad. What should I do now? Should I just say sorry or can I do something else to make it better so that it's not just, oh, I'm sorry and I walk away. I didn't really mean it. Well, I, I'm sorry because of this. But there's also the aspect of bullying is a huge trigger word for a lot of kids and they don't understand what bullying is and what that looks like. But they also don't understand they have a voice. Mm -hmm. And so I guess that's what the big thing of morning meaning is, is that it's giving children that voice. We teach I feel statements mm -hmm. where they say, I feel sad when you call me names because it makes me feel like I'm not worth anything. And having them able to pinpoint what's bothering them and being able to communicate that. So I would say the communication skills are very much hit and built on in our morning meetings. But that's almost not by design. It just comes out naturally. Mm -hmm. I don't have a book that I flip through. I don't have any curriculum per se. It's each year the kids have their own set of needs. Great, great. It's really interesting. Um, so you've been doing this now two years. Is that correct? Yes. You're in your second year of this. Mm -hmm. um, what has surprised you, if anything, uh, uh, about this time uh, during the morning meeting uh, with those kids. And uh, I think you say it's a, it's about a 10 minute time frame that you have the yes. meeting. Mm -hmm. um, it always surprises me how deep the kids go in, in we've, we've talked about this year alone, we've talked about losing a family member and mm -hmm. the grief that surrounds it. And morning meetings can be really, really happy where we're all sharing positive things or they can be really serious where we have some students who are so moved by something that they, they've cried. And it's, um, of course, I then contact parents to let them know, hey, I noticed this. So it's a great bridge between family as well. But um, it just, it's the kids that say it too that surprise you the most. It's that mm -hmm. child that you're like, I had no idea you were that deep. And they, they bring right. that out and it's just, um, so we, we've covered grief before, which I never thought we would cover in a 10 minute period of morning meeting. We've talked about um, self-confidence issues. But what's really neat about this is that every child has the opportunity to respond. And so one kid responds about losing a family member, another might respond about it, and they start making these connections within the classroom. And you might see them later that day talking with that same person or playing with that same person because now they've made that human to human contact. We all suffer, so let's join with those we suffer to support each other. And it's just so neat to see that in fourth grade. Awesome. Um, yeah, so that's probably the most surprising part is just, um, you. sometimes I, I expect too little of them and they just go way deeper than I ever would have imagined. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's really neat, you know, and it, it really uh, kind of, I was in a meeting earlier before uh, the time with you today. And honestly, that's one thing that came up in our meeting was just those times for those face-to-face -face conversations mm -hmm. and uh, just sharing uh, with one another and um, getting to know each other and where, you know, what uh, what may be a big issue that's going on in our life uh, at at that time, that day, whatever. Uh, and I remember when I taught myself um, with middle schoolers and, uh, mm -hmm. and just we had a, especially one day that was a very, um, what I'd say a heavy conversation in a, um, an eighth grade classroom. But 
I, I noticed a significant difference in empathy uh, mm -hmm. among the students after that class that day, just uh, a greater understanding, um, just empathizing with each other uh, better whenever some things were shared in that and discussions that were had. And, uh, you know, those are things that you don't necessarily plan for, but, no. uh, you know, one question may lead to another and those things happen. And I'm sure that's what your experience has been as well. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's so neat to watch. I had a pair of kiddos uh, two years ago who hated each other at the beginning of the year, like absolutely mortal enemies. And at the end of the year, <laughs> one of the parents come up to me and they're like, you know, my son came up to me and he, he was a very uh, special child. He spoke very much like an adult, but said, you know, he's kind of inappropriate times inappropriate at times, but I, I really like them. And they ended up being best friends at the end of the year. That doesn't happen wow. every year, but it's just, it was so neat to watch them go from, I can't work with this person. I hate this person too. Hey, I'm hanging out with them after school and we're spending the night together for a sleepover. We're like, okay, that's really neat. And that's such a cool testament of the growth within themselves as well. So. Exactly. But the amount of time that it took. So you have a 10 minute meeting. Yes. And there were conversations. Now I'm sure that, you know, this camaraderie didn't happen in two or three, you know, sessions. It took time, but just 10 minutes uh, for that to begin over time and then get to know each other and have a better understanding of who each of those two students were, you know, individually as people, if you will. Absolutely. Hmm. All right. So if a substitute, is in for in the rare occasion that you uh, have to take a day, a sick leave day or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, does the class still have the morning meeting? They do. It's um it's a lot less intense and um, a little more frivolous, but they still really enjoy the conversation. They either do um, just a simple question like, "What makes a good friend?" And they talk that out and find all the qualities of a good friend, and then pick you know which one they want to work towards that day. Um, or it could be, we do these things called town meetings and, you know, I went to uh, a board meeting and it, it kind of dawned on me that, oh, wouldn't it be cool if the kids had the opportunity to share their ideas without like all these parameters around it and having to do it with an academic language. Wouldn't it be neat if I just said, okay, tomorrow, this morning you get to share anything you want. As long as it's school appropriate, if it's a complaint, you don't use anyone's names. We say this person I know. And if you can be respectful about it, if we can, and then everyone else will get to share ideas about it. So they'll do a positive um, town meeting on those days with substitutes as well, where there's no negativity because I don't want to put that on a sub to right. try and handle because they don't know my kids, but they get to hear all the positive things that are going on in the classroom. So it's more of a celebration day. Sure. Good concept. And I would, my guess would be if it wasn't done, the kids would miss it. Yes. And, you know, it would probably, especially with having a substitute teacher in the classroom, um, mm -hmm. it is so important to set the right tone. And, yes. you know, they know what their expectations are and whether or not they carry them out. You know, I mean, you've established this level of trust with your students, which is terrific for one thing. And uh, they know that uh, you expect great things out of them whenever they're, if you're happen and have to be out of the classroom, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, have you had parent feedback about the morning meetings? <clears throat> I haven't had a whole lot just because there hasn't been anything huge that comes out of it except you know little friendships and things like that but every comment that i do have is we're so happy that you're doing this we've never seen this before um it's your my child talks about it when she comes or he comes home and so it's just little comments of like yeah we like this keep doing it um is i'm not expecting to change the world you know in one day but i figure if we we grow our children towards the adults we wish we could be or the adults that we wish we had in our lives, those caring ones that, that are empathetic and kind, well then maybe their world will look a little bit better than ours. Wow. Um, so it's really cool to see those little feedbacks from parents of, yeah, we heard about that and we really like it, but it's not like, Miss Younger does this, let's go tell the world about it. It's just, hey, it's cool, thank you. Yeah. So. Well, and you know, I would say it also perhaps gives those parents 
an opportunity for further discussions mm -hmm. about maybe the topic of grief or you know being hurt by someone or whatever and uh, just some things that they can chat about at home hopefully over the dinner table if you will absolutely uh, yeah. so whenever you first started um, did you have any challenges my biggest challenge was um, getting permission I mean, when you're talking about taking time out of academic learning, mm -hmm. you have to have a pretty good argument. Um, and I just, I used my year before, I said, you know, towards the end of the year, um, actually the whole second semester, it was very taxing on the whole class because we had two or three little girls who were really frustrated with each other, but never knew how to speak towards each other in a way that would be actually moving towards a, a, a positive outcome. It just was a spiral. And, you know, I brought that up. I said, I think it'll reduce my office referrals. Not that I had a lot, but I still, I, if I have a year where I have one or none, that is a successful year. Oh, wow. And I would rather have none every time. And I think administrators now notice that, that my classroom doesn't have as many come out. I mean, it takes something pretty severe to get an office referral from me mm -hmm. because all the kids that are in my classroom now know, okay, Miss Younger is going to give me that chance. And then, um, then I'll have to do this next steps of filling out my sheet and my parents, anyway, that they have to sign. But what I, what I had to argue is say, um, you know, I, I want to use my academic time. I want to use that instructional time um, fully. So in order to do that, it's kind of like when you hand out manipulatives to a child. If I hand out pattern blocks, I need to give them time to play with it mm -hmm. before they work. So that's kind of what a morning meeting is. Before I expect them to get in a full day of learning, I've got to give them time to play. I've got to give them time to talk and express their ideas because otherwise they're going to use all that academic time for it. So that was part of the argument. It was also that I think it will um, better our classroom environment. I think you'll be able to see a difference between my class and others because of that morning meeting. And so they gave me a year to try it out um, and liked it. And so now our whole fourth grade in my school is trying it out this year. <coughs> So just a cool little um, testament to that. But that was probably one of the hardest things was getting permission for it. But then getting the, the kids to talk, to mm -hmm. feel comfortable enough to share their ideas. And so we play this game called Flash in the beginning of the year. Um, it's a getting to know you game, but it also gets all of them to talk. And you have to act like Flash, the superhero, and answer really quickly. But we just say favorite color and then we're sitting in a circle on the ground anyway for morning meeting and they all have to go around within three seconds and say their favorite color. Then the next kid says something else that they would share and they go around the circle. So that every single child has that opportunity to say something they realize, oh, this isn't as scary as I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. But um, that was probably one of the hardest things in the beginning was just having them feel comfortable enough to share. Sure, sure. And that makes sense. It really does. But sounds like you started out great in doing that and uh then having others uh the other fourth grade classes mm -hmm. um do the really strategy as well yeah awesome um would you recommend this for younger and or older age students or classrooms have you um had that conversation with other colleagues in your school or outside your school even um, you know, we've went to a PBIS conference in the summer and actually somebody else in another district was presenting on morning meetings and had that conversation with them as well. And I've talked with administration too, but uh, this can work from kindergarten to fifth, I know for sure, uh, in the format that I have. Mm -hmm. I think uh, sixth and like middle school through high school might be a little more challenging and you might want to tweak the time down a little bit since you only have them for 45 minutes to an hour. But I still think giving um, giving students the opportunity to share before class even starts sets your classroom up for success. It builds trust. It um, allows for that release of information that they've been holding all day um, or up until that moment, something maybe happened in the hall and they needed to talk it out. Because when you come into a classroom, you have everything else that's happened to you that day on you. So given the opportunity to share it, you've now freed up your mind to some degree to allow something else in. Mm -hmm. So I, well, I think it would work. I just, I'm not sure how upper grades would look. Right. And just to be heard uh, mm -hmm. for those students. And you're right. Just uh, having that opportunity, maybe they just need to get something small. Uh, it may be small to you or some other students off their chest, but to them, it's a big deal. 
but Absolutely. just the opportunity to be heard and um, know that others care and uh, about their situation. And uh, like you say, it'll open up the pathways for learning and, um, you know, and hopefully make a difference uh, in your in your classroom, but also in other classrooms. Yes. That those students will go into and uh, have other encounters with uh, other in, uh, other students, other teachers, um, what have you there. It's always a little selfish, but I think I want the next year who has my kids to realize those are my kids by the way they act and the way they hold themselves in the classroom. Mm -hmm. I want them to realize that child is different because they are kind, they are considerate, they are um, respectful. And that's the dream. I, I mean, it's simple, but that's that's what I hope fifth grade would say, oh yeah, I know that's your kid. I know it is because I can tell. All right. Well, if I had kids and they were in fourth grade, I'd want them in your class Thank because you. you're teaching them, you know, some character traits that are so valuable and so badly needed. Mm -hmm. And if I were a fifth grade teacher, I'd look forward to having those kids coming into my classroom because I would know the foundation you've established with them. And, you know, it's so huge. And uh, it just, you know, it helps to get the uh, pathway to learning uh, started, if you will, and uh, allowing them to be receptive. And uh, we all have a voice. And uh, for some, that may be the biggest place where that voice gets to be heard is in that classroom with you. So kudos to you, Shannon, for the job you're doing there with those kids in fourth grade in Jackson. That's awesome. It really is. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hey, uh, that is, uh, that's pretty well it. The list of questions I had for you, but, uh, we really appreciate your time and, uh, thanks for sharing, uh, the blog post. We're going to get it up on, uh, the MSTA website later this week. And, uh, then we're probably uh, we're looking at uh, sharing uh, the hangout uh, a little bit later on as well. So uh, we hope this is uh, one of uh, several to come, and uh, you can uh, talk to your friends, colleagues, and uh, tell them you're going to be on air one of these days or whatever. So right. well. <laughs> hey, thanks for taking uh, time away from your day off from school uh, because uh, it's a holiday for uh, for every, many. Uh, but uh, we appreciate you giving up your personal time doing this. Well, thank you for the opportunity to share. You bet. Hey, take care. All the best to you, Shannon. Thank you. Right. Have a great day. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.